Hi, I'm Ian McCluskey with Renvu Solar, and you made it to the final of our seven-part series. At least, I hope you watch them in order, especially because this section, Balance of System, depends entirely on the equipment you selected in the earlier sections. In my opinion, Balance of System is the easiest place to make a tiny but costly mistake. We're talking breakers, fuses, conductor sizing, combiner box and NEMA ratings, and the rest of the items that seem relatively boring compared to inverter and panel technology, but they're not. At least, they won't be if on install day, a miscalculation prevents you from turning on the system and thereby getting paid for work. Or even worse, you turn on the system and something blows out. That can be very expensive. Always consult with Renvu and the manufacturer to make sure everything is correct. Battery-based systems require more overcurrent protection than a standard system as a rule, but the first one, series fusing, is the same. If you're not familiar already, now is a good time to read up on National Electric Code Article 690.9, which discusses solar PV series fusing. Moving on, most grid tie inverters have multiple inputs these days, so small DC combiners are increasingly rare, or at least they're increasingly rare, in the grid tied solar sector, but not in battery-based systems. In most residential projects, you will need to combine multiple strings in parallel into a charge controller or multiple charge controllers. And that requires an external DC combiner box with DC breakers or fuse holders. The minimum bus bar should be 1.25 times the short circuit current rating times the number of circuits in parallel. Charge controllers require breakers for their input and output. The input breaker is rated for the DC combiner output and the output breaker is rated for the max continuous output current. I'll say that one more time. The input breaker is rated for the DC combiner output, and the output breaker is rated for the max continuous output current. Always verify that conductors are large enough for the OCPDs they feed in NEC table 250.122. I am skipping the BOS considerations that are the same for standard grid tie systems, but there are some additional BOS considerations for large DC coupled battery projects. One example is the presence of multiple charge controllers. In this case, we recommend using the manufacturer's distribution panels, as they are pre-sized, partially pre-wired, have OCPD holders and bus bars, and mounting for monitor equipment, which are all very valuable features. Always consult with Renvu and the manufacturers if you need help. We can send you sample single line diagrams, which can be very clarifying. And that's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed and found this guide useful. I want to reiterate that it is most valuable as a step-by-step -step process to design a full system. If you don't believe me, go through and write down all the formulas shown in the order they appear. Put them into tables of the appropriate size and start plugging in numbers. Once you have the results, or if you run into trouble, Renvu sales engineers are waiting to work with you. Contact us at info at renvu.com or 855-755-5855. Cheers.